At Neef, I purchased the Celestron C6 XLT. Tonight, we're gonna give it its first light. Well, not exactly. It'll be its first imaging light. Last weekend was my dad's 60th birthday and I bought a solar filter with the telescope so I took it up and showed him the sun. He'd never taken a look at the, the sun through a telescope. I thought that was a good birthday present. But tonight we're gonna put some cameras on it and we are going to get it rolling. Now for tonight, we are gonna put the C6 on the ZWO or ZWO as I like to say, AM5 and we are going to be guiding it with an off-axis guider with the 174 millimeter mini. And because the observatory here is still under a bunch of light pollution, we're gonna be using the Optolong L-Pro filter. And one thing you're gonna to wanna to remember when you're buying an SCT that I almost forgot at Neef was dew prevention. So with this SCT, I made sure I got the rings that Celestron makes for this specific model and also the dew shield that is designed to hide the wires from the do the uh, do ring, and the nice thing too is you don't need to use Celestron's controller. The ASI Air, if that's all you're using, will control the do ring. Now with this focal length, you definitely do want to start trying to go with off-axis guiding. Now with this specific one, since it's one of the smaller ones, I probably could have gotten away with using my guide scope with the 120 mini, but I figured, what the heck, let's just go all in and get the off get the off axis guider. Well now, just for fun while waiting for it to get dark, let's put the solar filter on and see what's happening up on the sun. All right, now we're in here in the app. It's generally pointed north, not exactly polar aligned, but should still be able to see what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tell it to go to the sun. And it's gonna guesstimate, but we'll find it. I can already tell it's a little bit off. One way you can find the sun without actually looking at it using your telescope is look at the shadow of the sun. When it's pointed directly at the sun, you'll get a perfect circle or elongated based on the angle of the sun. Before we do anything else, we're gonna change the exposure down to about 10 milliseconds. And then we're gonna set that gain way down for a minute because that is way too bright. Now I know using the uh, 2600 for solar is not the best option, but that's what I got. <laughs> All right, pretty cool, huh? Now, actually, before I actually I take this, I'm gonna scoot this up just a little bit. We're over to the side, just away from that sunspot. I'm gonna defocus entirely, actually. Well, actually, we'll just use this as flat. So we'll take a few, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, and we'll just use this as flat. Yeah, like I said, I'm not expecting this to be an awesome picture, but it is what it is with the uh, 2600. All right, let's get this put back on that spot. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is refocus just a little bit. It's about as focused as it's gonna get. Now, looking at this histogram, there is a lot of red but we can kind of balance that out later since this is a one-shot color. But what I want to do is mess with it so the rest of the histogram is around 80%. So I'm going to bump up the gain just a little, whoop. Wrong thing, let's set that back to 10. And we'll bump up the gain just a little bit without blowing out the reds. Okay, and let it focus. And we'll focus one more time, just to be sure. The focus on this thing is extremely touchy. And we'll just let it go. I'm gonna do, because we're only doing like 12 frames per second, maybe 20 seconds, and I'll do three or four clips of 20 seconds and see how that works out. But while this is doing that, one thing I did wanna mention is the solar filter provided by Celestron actually doesn't fit very well with the dew rings that they also provide. Uh, the wires for the dew rings kind of get in the way. That's, that's a bummer, but I hope on the next iteration of the solar filter, 
they take the do rings into account because the do rings are screwed onto this. That's it, now we gotta wait for it to get dark. So going for tonight's target, because it's been so smoky lately because of those fires in Canada, haven't really got a chance to get this thing out to play. The bummer about all that smoke too is that it kind of looked like we were looking through a flats filter. It was ridiculous how cloudy it was here. And there is a Nova to get. So tonight we're pointing it at the pinwheel and we're getting that Nova. And we're just gonna leave it there all night. I'm gonna start off with EAA for the visitors here at the star party tonight. And then after they leave, I'll turn it into a regular imaging session, but I'm gonna use the frames from all of it to see what I get. Now, luckily with the star party tonight and where the pinwheel is located, during the time the public is gonna be here, it's gonna be pretty high up there. So the headlights of people coming and going and the people forgetting to use red lights aren't gonna to interfere too much, especially using the dew shield, blocking some of that light. But either way, it'll still be nice to them the supernova but the plan is because i'll be doing eaa and a regular set keep it short maybe a minute two minutes tops for my exposures that way i can keep the stars calm and get a lot of detail now it's always exciting to get first light on scope it's even more exciting when you can share it in person at a star party and with you watching this video but hey if you found this video entertaining please do like comment and then maybe consider subscribing i thank you for clear skies.